type because it's everywhere the vastly dominant uh, strain worldwide so it's an incredible thing that's happened in such a short space of time so yes the things we're hearing about are on top of a mutation that had already happened and that one is one that affects the the spike protein, which is the part of the virus that binds onto our cells. As I understand it, this new strain has got several additional mutations accumulated, but they're quite hard to keep track of and to know what's significant and what isn't. The strain that they're talking about actually is based on a group of viruses that had acquired a single mutation in a key area of the protein that binds to the receptor, the cellular receptor, and it's called the receptor binding domain. That virus has expanded quite significantly in the UK and Europe in the last few months. And that was the background on which a group of other mutations arose. These mutations, these are just changes in the RNA code, which then affect the character, the chemical character of the spike protein, which then could affect the way it binds. Are, are these all doing things which are having or could have an effect on the way that the virus and our cells interact? I don't think that all of them will have a, an impact. So we think that mo many of these mutations have arisen due to antibody pressure. The virus is either trying to make itself uh, replicate faster, which is what we saw with 614G. The second option is immune escape. And we think that certainly the mutations in the receptor binding domain, such as the 501 I mentioned, are likely to be escape mechanisms from the immune system. But they could also have a dual function of increasing the virus attachment to target cells. So when you say escape from the immune system, that means that if I get infected by the virus, I raise my body antibodies to the virus, to the spike protein. By making these small changes, it means that my immune antibodies don't work so well. We sometimes refer to it as an arms race. Um, the virus changes, then the host changes, and then the virus changes again. And that's how viruses have um, evolved typically through their history. So this is to be expected. Of course, the concern of, is that we're designing vaccines and therapeutics against this protein, which appears to tolerate multiple mutations, as it were. And therefore, we're concerned that, of course, these mutations might compromise the efficacy of some of the things we're designing in the longer term. I presume that if, if I have an infection and that virus mutates, then my immune system will try to keep up with it. And even then, the mutated forms may still be somewhat susceptible, but not so susceptible. I, I don't know quite how black and white it all is. Yes, it's not um, black and white because, of course, we develop a whole array of responses to viruses and we develop different types of antibodies targeting different parts of the spike protein. And therefore, these escape mutations will have impacts maybe on individual antibody types. But of course, we now have a combination of at least five mutations. So you could be knocking out five different parts of the immune response. Although the impact may be incremental, you don't know which individuals have which antibody responses. I guess that, that then raises uh, two questions uh, for the near future. One of which is whether if a virus which can escape the immune system better will then lead to worse health outcomes. And secondly, whether it will become more transmissible from one person to another. I think the more concerning thing is that the escape from antibodies and potentially vaccines is the thing we need to look out for. And it certainly isn't happening now. I don't believe that this new variant is resistant to any vaccine-induced responses. Currently, the vaccines will work because vaccines elicit very, very broad responses and multiple different types of antibodies. The question is whether the virus is on its way to becoming less sensitive to the vaccines in the longer term. A disturbing thought, and clearly there will be a host of lab experiments testing the effects of these accumulating mutations as well as epidemiological.